Sometimes God gives you a job to do. And when that happens, you have to drop everything and just start walking. Hey, Casey, how's your sister doing? She just got her cast off last week. She's a lot of fun. Father, that was a lovely service. You want to talk sometime? My door is always open. God, is everyone in this family allergic to light? What do you want? Just call mom crying, so that wasn't weird. You're so mean to her. She only climbs up on her cross when she wants some attention. My daughter, Catherine. She's back from college. She's different. Huh? The way she talks, the way she looks at me. It's not depression. I know depression. There are things going on in the house. In my house, there are voices inside the walls. Mom? I am not a crazy person. I'm not saying you're crazy. There is something inside my house. It's a demon. A demon? And it's trying to take my daughter. Father Marcus, what can you tell me about demonic possession? I had a dream, and you're in it. Go on. There was a child tied to a bed. Tony Tone Show, Vintage Sound, 93.1 FM. If you like getting scared, tonight's the night for you on Fox at 8 o'clock Central. The Exorcist continues, and boy, oh boy. Are they doing a good job of being a very scary television show? You just heard some audio a few moments ago. And one of the stars of The Exorcist is on the MPW Digital TV Celebrity Hotline. You will remember him from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He played Cameron. He was also on Spin City. It's Alan Ruck. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to the great state of Iowa. I want to pay you a compliment. I uh, I have watched The Exorcist, and I'm 33 years old, Alan, and it scared the crap out of me. So thank you for that. Oh, you're, you're more than welcome. Glad to be of service. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, it gets. Well, I tell you what, it gets scarier. Oh, good. Uh, great. Yeah, it, it just it keeps kind of ramping up. So. You know what I love is that it's so well done, Alan, and I wonder if if you could tell or if you got that sense when you're looking at a script and you're getting ideas from the people behind it, is it clear to you at that time that The Exorcist is going to be a well-done show? Well, yeah, you can get a, a sense pretty quickly, I think. I mean, sometimes things can go uh, wrong, but uh, when I first got the audition, you know, I thought The Exorcist, wow, how are they going to... How are they going to do that? You know, because we all love the movie. It's an iconic picture. It's a great movie. Um, and then I read the script, and it scared the hell out of me, and I thought, I really want to be a part of this. I've always wanted to do horror movies, you know, so, and I've never really done one, uh, just some uh, little short ones, you know. So uh, uh, I really wanted to be a part of it. I went in, I met the people. They put me down on, on tape, and they sent it away for other people to look at, and then they offered it to me, and my wife doesn't like this kind of stuff at all, and she's very <laughs> scary, to, scary about me doing this kind of movie and bringing that kind of energy into the house. And then my manager said, well, you might want to tell her that Gina Davis just signed on, <laughs> you know. Right. And so then my wife said, well, of course you have to do it. And so as soon as somebody like that, uh, you know, uh, hooks up to a project, you have a pretty good sense it's going to be top notch. You know, and Gina's great. I had the opportunity to talk to her a few months back and the things that she's doing for women and equality in Hollywood. Um, and then, yeah, I, I have to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised to see her and yourself in this project, but it works. And obviously, you're an actor playing a role, but. Alan, you're you're incredibly convincing, and the fact that you already referenced it's going to get scarier. I think that people are going to just continue to enjoy this, and and the response so far has been all positive. I mean, I have I have friends locally that are enjoying it, and uh, and then there's people you know with the lu- the luxury of where we're at that people can get caught up and watch it on demand. So it's it's definitely yeah. a a good place to be, and I'm glad that Fox picked it up. You know. Yeah, I, I think they're being really good with us. You know, they're, um, it's a really ambitious show. We're trying to, you know, you try to make a television show like this in about eight working days. And we're, we're doing a lot, you know. So uh, we're going a little bit over, and they're really good about letting us maybe have an extra day here or there to, 
you know, clean up all the bits, uh, uh, you know, p- bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they, they've been great to us. Isn't it nice? I mean, it seems like television and shows that are on networks and places like Netflix, it's really had like a, a resurgence. And um, I wonder, since you've, you've been acting for a while, are the sets bigger? I mean, does it feel more like a movie as opposed to a series in 2016 when you're working on a show like The Exorcist? Yeah, I, it, things have changed because I, I've been doing this for about 35 years. Oops. And um, <laughs> uh, the thing that's true now is that, that uh, television shows do feel more like little movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the production uh, uh, elements... Uh, the production values are just so much higher. What they can do with the cinematography now in a shorter period of time with all the digital technology is, is amazing. So our show looks like a feature film. You know, it, it's yeah. just gorgeous. And um, uh, it's not that the, the sets are bigger necessarily. It's just that the end product uh, on television now is just uh, it's visually satisfying and... Um, People realize that there's uh, television now is is a great opportunity to do all sorts of stories that in the old days you'd have to go to the movies to see, and now right. it's shifted. Yeah, and and the way that they paint the frames for The Exorcist on Fox has been great. And I and I and I don't want to say that I'm a nerd, but I appreciate what you were saying, and you know the cinematography and how it how it looks. Um, it would be one thing if the show was uh, just scary and gimmicky, which it's not, but it, it's so well done that you kind of you kind of get lost in this world. And, it, you know, and when it's over, you're left wanting to see the next episode. You know, that's that's a good sign. Yeah, good. I think that's it is. It is a good sign. I mean, I feel really good, feel really good about it. And I think that um, I think most people have uh, responded to it uh, really positively. So sure. Very happy. You should nice be. Place to be. Yeah, it's great, and I and I know that it's going to continue to do well. Um, do you ever get tired of talking about Ferris Bueller's Day Off? No, there was this one period in the early '90s where I couldn't seem to land a job, and I didn't want to talk about Bueller anymore because I was convinced I was a one-trick pony. Sure, but um, it's been so long now, and people like it so much that I'm. I'm really happy to have been part of something that people love, you know. It's incredible that it continues to find new audiences. And I think of myself, so I'm 33, and when I saw it and how old I was, and now I have a four-year-old who in a couple of years I will – I don't want to force movies like that on him, but they're, they're so good. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be the parent that's yeah. like, like I want you to watch these ten movies because I love them and I think you'll like them. But it, it really – Ferris Bueller just has that – that quality that uh, that has resonated for so long with so many people. I mean, it it's got to be you know. While I can understand it being something that for a while, like you said, you didn't want to talk about, but it's got to make you feel good to be associated with something that people enjoy so much. I am, I am. Uh, ben Stein, the guy that played the the teacher that said Bueller, Bueller. You know, yeah. Um, he 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 remarked that uh, he th- thinks the film is successful because it, there's not a mean bone in its body. Right. It's really you know I, 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 essentially it's about a kid that cuts school to take care of his sick friend. Right. You know, <laughs> and he, even if it's psychosomatic, he's 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 <laughs> taking care of his friend who's sort of suffering from some depression. You know, so it's a really um, it, it's it's uplifting in that way. I mean, even though. The guy's kind of a con artist, right? Uh, the lead character is kind of a con <laughs> artist. Uh, uh, he does all these things basically to give his friend a boost. So it's uh, sure. anyway, it just makes people feel good. I don't know. It's got some kind of voodoo. It's, there's some intangible thing going on with that movie, <laughs> and um, I'm I, I'm just glad that you know when anybody watches it, they they have a good time. And for me, it was you know part of it is growing up in the Chicago suburbs, and there's so many scenes and places that I you know that I visited and. It really just uh, a, yeah. a strong connection. Well, listen, uh, I want to wish you continued success, my friend, with uh, The Exorcist. It's on Fox. I hope the people are watching it. Um, it's tonight at 8 o'clock Central for us, and it's only going to get scarier. And um, I don't know how to say this, but I, I would like your character to hang around as long as possible. So 
Well, I, I, I don't actually know. We're okay. in the middle of it now. I don't, I, we don't know where it's going. <laughs> okay, good. Well, yeah. just know that, right. uh, that, that we're, when we're watching it, like uh, on the list of people that we would be okay with not being around for whatever could happen to them, we want your character to stick around forever, okay? Is that all right? All right. That's great. Thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend, Alan Ruck. Thanks for the time, man. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye.